Good morning. I know for some of you second service people, you didn't know that 8 o'clock existed on Sunday morning, but I'm glad that you came out. <laughs> um, some of us are early morning people, and we like to come to the second service anyway. Some of us like to come to the first service, but we welcome you for this very special Sunday. This is our Love Project Sunday, as I can see by the shirts many of you know, and those who don't have shirts, you probably know too. Um, which was begun some years ago as an outreach of our church where we have an abbreviated service and then we go out and we serve our community to bring the love of Jesus Christ to people. And so that's what we're doing today. And we were sort of in hibernation two years ago. We came out slightly out of hibernation a year ago and now we're hoping that we're going to be getting back in the full gear. Amen. So anyway, thank you so much for coming out. Tim is going to lead us in the call to worship. Let's stand together for that. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come into your presence in joyful celebration. For the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. You are our God, and we will exalt you. You are good, and your love endures forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, who is and was and evermore shall. Amen. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all? Try to reach the world. 
we thank you so much that you have come to us to dwell among us and one of the ways that you do that is through your love pouring out through each of us we pray that today as we're in the service as we go out to serve one another to serve our community to serve you that you would be present in our love for one another amen please greet one another with the love of christ Well, what a good-looking group. I was greeted this morning. Someone said, it's today casual Sunday. I said, yes, it is. It's not a bad idea. You know, most of you guys don't wear ties anyway. So, you know, it's, you know, it's not a problem. But uh, it, is, it is my habit most of the time. Well, as we pray, I'm going to pray for the 14 different... Uh, love projects that we have today. I'll pray for uh, each project by name and then uh, the the leader as well 
And then at the end of the service, after communion, if we could have the leaders join me up here in the, in the platform, and we'll give you uh, your sign for your group. So when you go outside for, uh, you know, for the, for the, the brunch this morning, uh, if you have that, people can find you uh, where you are. And in case you're, you're listening during the prayer, I'll say the project number and also the leader, so you can keep that in mind as you're looking for the right group afterwards. Well, let's pray. Heavenly and Holy Father, we thank you for this command that you've given us, Jesus, to love one another. And Lord, this is something that you, we take very seriously, to love each other with all our heart, with our words of appreciation and affirmation, encouragement, and uh, our actions and reactions, and also in our service. Not only serving one another in our own uh, Christian community here, our own church community, but reaching out to the community at large and to share the love of Jesus Christ with some people that uh, we are just meeting for the very first time. And Lord, you've told us when we do it to the least of these, thy brethren, we've done it unto you. So give us that attitude of service, that we're serving you, Christ. We're serving you with all that we do and we say. And we pray, Lord, that as we serve, that we be listening, listening to you speak to us, uh, through uh, gifts of service and through people and circumstances, uh, that we would hear you speaking to us as we continue our series on hearing the voice of God. Father, we pray for number, our first love project, uh, the morning breakfast and uh, the bagel breakfast outside, and we thank you so much uh, for all those involved with that, for Susan Patterson as she leads that and others that serve, Father, bless that love project. We pray for our project too, thanking our first responders and our teachers. We pray for Rebecca Toman as our leader and all those that have baked goods and wrapped them and will we'll be bringing them to uh, our first responders and teachers. Father, for the blessing bags, we thank you for Deb Lang that has been heading this up for a number of years now and they continue to serve as a blessing, I think of this homeless lady that came to our church in November and how immediately people sprang uh, uh, to go and get a, a blessing bag to bring to her. And, and Father, uh, throughout the year, you use these blessing bags uh, to people, and we pray for all those that participate in that Project 3. For Project 4, the wood splitting in Boylston with Jim Byler, from the very first year Jim has been overseeing this and and every year we've we've done this and we thank you God for those that serve in this uh, capacity and uh, we pray your blessing and uh, a special blessing upon uh, the person that is receiving the wood. For project five we thank you for Eric Wilder and the yard work at Townsend Farm. We pray Father for all those that serve to bring help them to be safe, to have fun, and to share and to communicate the love of Jesus uh, in that project. For Project 6, we thank you for Wendy Harrop, Lord, and the yard work. For Nan uh, Norseen, thank you for Nan and how she's been such a, a blessing to us in so many ways. We think of the living nativity and bringing over her sheep, and uh, we thank, thank you that we can give back in this small way. So bless all those that participate in Project 6. For Project 7, we pray for the yard work for Westboro Senior. We pray for Jen Murphy and Debbie Baxendale as they oversee this, uh, this project. Father, we pray for success. We pray for team unity. We pray, Lord, for uh, a sense of your presence as they serve. Project 8, we pray for Mark Brennan as he oversees yard work for Bolton Senior. Thank you for Mark, and we thank you uh, for the recipient of this uh, particular project. We pray, Father, for all those involved with raking and digging and cutting and, and bagging, and Father, that this would be, uh, again, a blessed time that they would sense and know the presence of Christ as they serve. Project 9, we pray for Wendy Hyma as she and her team 
uh, does gardening at Bigelow Gardens. Uh, we thank you, Father, for this project, and we pray, Lord, that you be glorified in it. We pray for Kirsten Joyner, Project 10, the cutting garden at Trinity Church. We thank you for this, this cutting garden that is continuing, and what a great blessing for people to come and to cut flowers and to, and to give them away to others. And we thank you, Lord, this is, a, this is a project that keeps on giving throughout the summer. And we pray, Father, for your anointing upon that one. Project 11, with yard cleanup, Jean Marie Padovano. Father, thank you for Jean Marie. Thank you for her willingness to oversee this yard cleanup. We pray, Father, for just a, a blessed time together, and Lord, for uh, your, your, your spirit to be clearly present as they serve. We pray for Paul Krolikowski, Project 12, yard work for local senior couple in Hudson. We thank you, Lord, that we can reach out uh, uh, to the Golden family and help them with this Project 12. We pray, Father, for all the, the bagging of leaves, the, the power washing of steps, uh, the replacing of, uh, of different uh, trim work, and Father, all the work that is done. We pray for Paul as he oversees this project, and we pray, Father, that you be glorified in it. Project 13, love your neighbor. Hashtag L-Y-N. Thank you for Kathy Romeo and Lisa Sullivan as they go over in the common here in Bolton and to have this great sign-up uh, for all different kinds of uh, community uh, services. And we pray, Father, people would have a culture of service. They'd reach out and they'd come together and to serve uh, in different capacities. And thank you for uh, for those involved with Project 13, we pray, Lord, that your love would be contagious and would, would spread uh, from uh, community to community, from household to household, and that indeed a culture of service will continue to be fostered. And for Project 14, singing for seniors at the Corcoran House in Clinton, we pray for Pat Hammond as she uh, takes up this. We're thankful, Lord, that I, we haven't been able to do this for a couple of years now, and we're so thankful that we can now go and, and to sing for the seniors there and bless all those that, that use their gifts in this way, and we pray that you be glorified in it. Father, thank you for this privilege of service, and we ask that you would guide and direct us and speak to us as we serve. Hear us now further as we pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Deb has special music today. I will serve thee a great, a great uh, selection. And uh, as the music has played, uh, let's, uh, well, the offering basket is passed. Let's give to the glory of God.
just a small portion of what you've given to us. Please bless these gifts. Please send them around the globe. In Christ's holy name, amen. If you will turn in your Bibles for our Old Testament reading from 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 13 through 17. That's on page 513 in the Pew Bibles. If you have a Bible that looks like this one in the Pew, it's page 513. 2 Samuel chapter 23, beginning at verse 13. During harvest time, three of the thirty chief men came down to David at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three mighty men broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. Far be it from me, O Lord, to do this, he said. Is it not the blood of men who went at the risk of their lives? And David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty men. Our gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, the first nine verses. That's on page 1,578 in the Pew Bibles. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Mark 14. Now the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only two days away. And the chief priest and the teachers of the law were looking for some sly way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them at any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Our New Testament reading is on page 1706 in our Pew Bibles, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, and verses 10 through 19. Acts 9, 10 through 19. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Dave. Well, we're continuing in our series on hearing God's voice, and uh, today's message is God speaks to us through loving and serving others, and that's about what we're ready to do, isn't it? And so be listening, listening for God to speak to you as you serve. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. The Lord speaks to his sheep through a variety of means, including speaking to us through loving and serving others. If we have ears to hear what he's telling us. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, who pastored the Metropolitan Tabernacle in London, England in the 19th century, he was called the Prince of of Preachers, and he would preach to crowds up to 10,000 people with no microphone, so imagine that. that. That must have been quite a set of lungs. Well, during the 38 years of preaching, he grew extremely worn out and discouraged. Yes, even pastors like this man at times of discouragement. And he gave up preaching for a while, and, and, and so he went to attend a small Methodist chapel And a local pastor preached. He was greatly moved, for God spoke powerfully to him through the pastor's sermon. At the close of the service, he told the pastor he appreciated greatly his helpful message. The pastor was very pleased to hear that. I said, oh, what's your name? He said, I'm Charles Haddon Spurgeon. The pastor got very red-faced and stammered, admitted that he had actually used this pastor's sermon that was published and used it for his own uh, congregation without giving credit to Reverend Spurgeon. Well, Spurgeon acknowledged that that was true. It was his sermon. But through that, he realized that his sermons were not only for others, but for himself. And he was greatly blessed by that and returned back to the pulpit to continue to preach. He had ears to hear what God was saying to him. And sometimes when God speaks through another person, through an act of service, and encourages us and refreshes us to go back and continue to serve God when we grow weary. God speaks to us through acts of service and words of affirmation. We see this again in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, where Jesus was in Bethany reclining at the table of Simon the leper. A woman came into the home with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. John, in his gospel narrative, adds the details that this was Mary of Bethany. And he also says that she wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the the fragrance of perfume. Jesus says this, and we'll put it up on the screen for you at home and here. Truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Imagine this action, this service that she did was, was so significant that it made Holy Scripture, and we're talking about it even today in 2022. God's voice clearly is speaking through the sacrificial gift of loving devotion given by Mary of Bethany as she anointed Christ's body with this very expensive perfume. God was speaking to all who hear the story of the great worth of his son who laid down his life for us. He's worthy. He's worthy of the very best we have to give. So as you get tired out there and and the bugs start to fly and, and you feel the back start to tighten up, And your hands maybe get, you know, maybe they're soft. you got preacher's hands like mine, and you're not used to to working out there. Uh, And and as you're going, uh, remember that Jesus is worthy of our very best. 
for our service that we have to give. God has designed us for community, for inter interdependent relationships where we serve others, to mutually benefit both the giver and the receiver, bringing mutual edification and accountability that we may hear God's voice. I remember some years ago, before God called me to be a pastor, I was asked to go visit a lady who was dying of cancer. I had no experience at that time in hospital visitation and very little in common with this elderly lady I went to visit. After all, I was single and she was a grandmother, all right? She was elderly and I was young. She was mature in the faith and I was not. She was dying of cancer and I was rarely sick, let alone understood what it meant to actually have cancer and to be dying. I was an introvert. You got the idea? I was really out of my league. I had no idea what am I doing here? What do I have to offer this lady? Well, nevertheless, I sense God speaking to me to say, go and visit this lady. Well, God graciously helped me through, and he'll graciously help you through, through things that he asks you to do that you're way out of your com comfort zone. Well, the elderly lady took charge immediately. She introduced me, uh, introduced herself, and she welcomed me into the hospital room. She thanked me for coming to see her, and, and as I stood around not sure what to do, she said, why don't you have a seat here on this, this seat next to the bed close to me? I said, all right, that's what I'll do. She looked at me and said, you'll probably want to ask, how am I feeling today? <laughs> and am I ready to meet the Lord or not? I said, that's a great question. Yes. <laughs> By the way, how are you feeling? And are you ready to meet the Lord yet or not? After listening to her speak of her faith in Jesus and her readiness to meet her Savior and to, to rejoin her departed husband in heaven, she looked at me, and again, I was kind of like a deer in the headlights, not sure what to do. She said, well, that Bible you have in your hand, you probably would like to read something to me. What do you think? And I went, another good idea. <laughs> so I fumbled through, and I, I found, my, I found a, a familiar passage, not, not sure which one I read, but probably one that I was very familiar with, and I read it and she drank in every word. Then stumbling what to do ne next, she again graciously guided me and said, would you like to hold my hands if you're comfortable and we can pray together? Another good idea. And so I did, and then I was just kind of not sure how to end the conversation, and she helped me with that too. She said, you're probably a busy man and you probably have places to go and I'm getting pretty tired, so thanks for coming. I said, all right, now I know what to do next. <laughs> Out the door I went. Now, why do I share that story? The story is that God may call us to do things that we, have, we feel we've got zero to offer. I've got nothing to offer. I don't have the experience. I don't have the knowledge. God is gracious. He'll help you. He'll guide you step by step by step. I've experienced in my own life, and many of you have experienced the same thing in your own life as well. The key is to listen and to serve, to say, Lord, yes, I'm ready. Well, I came to uplift another. In the end, my faith was uplifted and strengthened by God through this dying lady that I came to help. Sometimes when we go to serve, we're the ones that get the greater blessings, and that's often the case. So go and serve. God speaks through the words and actions of others to foster interdependence. God continually connects believers together in service. So we can hear God speaking, not just in isolation, but in community. Actions speak louder than words. God spoke to a lady in Bolton through a past love project through people here in this church. People showed up to her house to rake the yard and trim the shrubbery, not realizing that her husband had recently passed away. She heard the Lord speaking to her through the acts of service of this church, 
saying God did love her. She wasn't forsaken in her grief. People were there. And as a result, she contacted me here at Trinity and said, I know I don't go to your church. I'm not even part of a Protestant church at all. But will you perform my husband's funeral for me as a graveside? And I did that. Never underestimate the power of God speaking to you and to others through acts of service and words of affirmation to others. And as I go and I went to her circle of friends at that graveside, she heard that God loved her so and sent his son to die upon the cross for her sins. And her whole family did as well, that they may have everlasting life if they put their faith and their trust in Christ. And it all began from a love project here at Trinity. And people going, saying, I'm going to rake leaves, not realizing God had a greater kingdom purpose beyond that particular action. Isn't that cool? King David was blessed by his mighty men one day, and he was behind enemy lines, longing for sweet waters of his hometown of Bethlehem. Some of his men courageously made their way through enemy lines. They brought back water for David from the wells of Bethlehem. It's found in 2 Samuel 23. Their loving sacrifice was too much for him. And sometimes your loving sacrifice for someone else may be too much for them, and they, they, won't, they won't know what to do. And they may come out with some food for you. And don't say, oh, no, no, don't bother. I brought my own lunch. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't insult them. Receive what they have to give. I remember a love project I was involved with here through this church in Worcester. We're putting a ramp for someone in that was not even of the Christian faith. And they were from another country. They were, uh, they were there, and, and uh, Deborah Lee Murphy was with us, and it was a, I believe it was a Pakistani family, I'm not sure, but it was someone over, uh, you know, across the pond, as it were. And they brought out all this food. And Deborah Lee, having her training uh, as a missionary in Indonesia, said, don't insult them by not taking their food. Sit down. And, and, and if it's time to, you want to keep working, stop working and sit down with them and engage in conversation. The, the leaves will, will be there or the ramp will be ready. We can pour the cement later, all right? And so, so think about the people that you're going to serve and take the time to talk with them and engage them, and receive back from them. Well, the loving sacrifice of David's mighty men was so great, he poured it out to the Lord. And he said, uh, to do this, is it not the blood of men who went at the risk of their lives? And he was, God uh, showed David he was greatly loved through this courageous act of service. Well, in the New Testament, we have another example in the life of the Apostle Paul, how God spoke to him through the acts of service and words of another name, Ananias. Acts 9 tells us that God spoke to a disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said, rise and go to a street called Straight. Go to the house of Judas. Look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. He's praying. He's seen in a vision. You'll come and you'll lay hands upon him. Then he might be healed. Now this is the apostle Paul, soon to be. And God spoke to him through visions and dreams. Why does this man need to come and do this? Well, sometimes God speaks through a person and through an acts of service, and we all need to be listening for how God speaks. The scripture says this, but Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem, and here he's authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. The Lord said to him, go. He's a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. So Ananias heard the Lord's voice, and guess what? He listened. He went. So when you hear God speaking to you, go. Listen. It's always the right response as he speaks. After church last week, two people came up to me and said, you know, God spoke to me about this matter, and God spoke to me about this matter, and I obeyed, and I did this. And I said, how do you feel about that? It was wonderful. It's great when you hear God speak to you, and you say, yes, Lord, yes. And you go, and you serve, and you do what he calls you to do. Well, 
As Ananias went, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. He regained his sight. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and was baptized. Well, today as you go forth to serve others in various love projects, look to God to speak to you through those you go to serve. Knowing that God wants to speak to you through you as one of his chosen sheep of a sheep pen. This is his command to love each other. Listen to how God speaks to you as you serve. And next week, we'll have 10 minutes for you to share how God has spoken to you and through you to others. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful so much how you speak to us. We're humbled. And we pray you'd give us listening ears to how you're speaking to us. And Lord, we're humbled to hear how you'll speak through us to those that we go to serve. Not only the recipients, but the team that we're on as we uh, build relationships together in interdependent relationships. Thank you for these examples in Scripture and from these other examples in, in history and in my own life as well. Thank you, Lord for the many examples of how you speak to us as we serve. In your name we pray, amen. I'll invite you to, to stand, and Tim will lead us in singing the Apostles' Creed, and then we'll join together in receiving communion.
You may be seated. Here now these scriptures from the Psalms and then from the Gospel of John. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and with compassion. John 3 and 13. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Let's join in our confessional prayer together. Heavenly and Holy Father, we come to this thy table with faith in the completed work of atonement of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Forgive us all our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Forgive us, Father, that we are more often more willing to accept forgiveness than to forgive, more willing to accept your love than to share it with others, especially with those who have hurt us. Teach us to forgive as you forgive. Grant us your grace that we may love others unconditionally as you have loved us. As the bread is passed, we invite you to Susan. We invite you to take uh, and hold the uh, unleavened bread, and uh, then we'll commune together. And uh, Tom has the gluten-free bread down here, and Keith has a gluten-free up there. Just raise your hand if you would like to receive gluten-free bread this morning. Go and serve. Let us uh, commune together as we celebrate the death of the Lord Jesus. Take and eat the body of our Lord.
on sir <laughs> cup of the new covenant in Christ's blood. Let's drink together as we remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Dan Williams, would you offer a prayer of uh, thanksgiving for us, sir? As we sing our final song, I want to ask the leaders to come up and get your sign from me as we sing. So if you're in that category, please come on up, and then we'll, we'll have a benediction, and we'll go out for our brunch.
Remember to take some pictures, all right? Before, during, after, all right? It's always a good thing. Great that we all have these cell phones. They're such great cameras, aren't they? And uh, so do that. Remember to pray together as you go and serve and have lots of fun. I don't have to tell you that. I know you'll do all that. And uh, take, take time for lunch. Some of you people say, I don't need lunch. I'm going to press through. Yeah. Stop. Take time. And break bread together with one another. Receive now the benediction. And now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all as you go and serve. God bless you and go and serve. Thank you.